set for him given everything that he went through this year? Yeah, it's a fresh start. Playoffs to, is an opportunity to kind of define your year regardless of how you played in the regular season. He went through such a, a tumultuous journey to get to the playoffs here for us. So I'd like him to go open, keep the game as simple as he can after his little bit of a layoff here. He's unfortunately or fortunately, he's done that a couple of times this year. He's come in after a few days off. So uh, and enjoy it. You know, this is a chance. He's a big body. He can, he can move. He can control pucks. So this is a good time for him to apply his trade. Go back to Ken Weeb for a follow-up. Go ahead, Weaver. Does he just slide in with Stastny and Kopp and Veselin and comes out then? So I was good. I'll give you who's coming in, but that'll be about it, Ken. Go next to Tim Campbell from NHL.com. Go ahead, Tim. Coach, uh, how much of it uh, was a factor in game one that you stayed out of the penalty box and how much of a priority is that for game two? Well, it's a critical part, I would think, for both teams, but they finished number one and their power play had caused us a lot of problems this year, so we have an awareness of it. At the same time, you can't play off the man or the puck uh, for fear of taking a penalty because it actually creates more opportunities for penalties. So riding that balance is, is the key piece. They don't want to put us on the power play. We don't want them on the power play. I, I think it was called right. There wasn't there, there were hits for sure, but it was a really cleanly played game because both teams are aware of the other team's talent level. We'll go next to Ted Wyman from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Ted. Well, can you give us an update on the status of Nikolai Ehlers? Yeah, he looks good. He uh, he was out of the gold sweater today and wore a normal sweater, so he's he's been in controlled contact for probably four or five days now, and uh, and he's in full contact now and looking like he wants to play. We'll go next to Paul Friesen from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Paul. Paul, we all saw what Pierre Luc did in last year's playoffs. Uh, is that just a knack that some guys have, or is he built for this kind of game? Or? Well, we would like to think so. Like We've talked now for a couple of weeks about the way the game changes. And being big, strong, and fast in hands is, is more suited to this kind of game. Uh, it's a heavier game. It's a more of a size game at times, if you, unless you're really, really fast. It's about uh, controlling pucks, and every check gets finished, so you got to be able to absorb those and still make the play. So the game comes to fit more of what he possibly can do. And you know what? There are other players. There are some guys that can get that. that they almost need the playoffs to get them to the emotional level where their, their game truly comes out. So I think that's what I saw in the playoffs last year. He looked really wired. He's coming out of the Eastern Conference, and it's a different game. So there's some adjustments. And I guess we're in some ways, um, it doesn't look anything like the Central Division, the Eastern Conference. So we think he fits our style more. We'll go next to Sarah Orleski from TSN. Go ahead, Sarah. Thanks, Gregor. Hi, Paul. Just wondering, what do you expect this game to look like? And do you anticipate maybe a little bit more emotion in this game than what we saw overall in game one? I think this is going to be a way faster game. I thought, you know, when you look at the shots or 6-6 after the first period, there was some tension and some nerves by both teams. And I don't think that the game got to the north-south speed that you're going to see tonight. I think their transition game gets a lot quicker. I think their D get up the ice an awful lot more, which is going to lead to bigger impacts. I, I, I know there was a big number of hits. I think there were a lot of bumps. I don't think there were a lot of hits. But in a game when the speed gets amped up, the hits get bigger. I also think that they put a lot of pucks to our net after the first period. I think that that's going to be what they're going to do. So this game is going to get straight lined very, very fast up and down. And there's going to be a lot of whistles in the blue paint. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the free press. Go ahead, Mike. Afternoon, Paul. Uh, just to pick up on Ted's question about Nikolai Ehlers, you said that he looks like he wants to play. Is there a chance he gets in tonight or are you ruling him out? No, no, he's not playing tonight. But Sunday would be a possibility? Yes. We'll go back to Ted Wyman from the Sun. Go ahead, Ted. Paul, well, um, what were your thoughts on uh, what we saw last night uh, with the incident in Toronto involving John Tavares? Well, it is, you know, it just stops everything, right? When you see something that uh, dangerous, the hit to the head and... Um, you know, there's a really, really healthy competition and animosity between teams in the playoffs that gets built very, very fast. And something like that just ends it, right? Both of those teams, Canadians and well, are, are 
are, are going through the same set of emotions in a lot of ways, even though it's an opponent, they just hope he's fine. Right. Like that's a, uh, it was a terrible thing. Great news today that, it, that he looks like he's, you know, it's good. Things are good. He's, he's, he's on the right path back, but that kind of stops the game, right? Stops the, uh, it's the perspective of the game changes pretty darn quick. Go next to Jim Matheson. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, Paul, one question on Connor McDavid. You know, I'll try to keep it brief because you've been asked a million of them. How difficult is it to not take a penalty when Connor's coming up the ice? I mean, if you just lay back, he just goes through you. But, you know, it's, he's, a, he's a little harder to, to not yeah. take a penalty against than most guys in this league. It's all timing and positioning, right? You, if you're 100% right, he can use that ice either way. If you're a half step behind him, it's over. And if you give him two feet of ice, you got a real problem, right? If you if you are actually he's accelerating to you because you have a gap and you're slowing down because you're closing to your net, you've got that's a real bad match for anybody. So trying to time and match that speed um, is the key piece. And and even with that, you're just not getting it right every time. Thanks very much, Coach. Okay, guys. Thanks everyone. We'll be back with you post game. Have a great day.